Are all the good deals done? Whenever you have that opportunity to give back, that is amazing. We think that in life is not subtracting, it's adding. Faith, family, then business. We love what we do and that shows in our day by day. There is opportunity for you to become part of our team. You can get rich selling real estate, but in order to get wealthy, you have to and welcome to the Punta Cana podcast. My name is Cheryl Henderson and I am your guide to Punta Cana living. And on today's episode, I have someone who is really, really special to my heart. This is an episode where we're talking about real estate and Keller Williams Punta Cana. And I have today my number one top agent in KW Punta Cana, Felipe De La Rosa. How are you today, Philly? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you so much for the invite. Yes, I'm so happy to have you here. So your name is Felipe yes. De La Rosa, but I call you Philly. Yes. Because I don't know why we all, we all call you, some of the people who are closest to you call you Philly, and then there's also Philip, yes. which is the, the American English, way. Yeah. <laughs> the American <laughs> way. So Philly, tell us just a little bit about you, about your background. You kind of have right. an interesting background. Yes, thank you so much again. You know, I come from New York originally. I've been in this country already for 21 years, and I've been doing real estate with you for the past eight years. Basically, what drove me to become a realtor was just getting to, to be more closer to the expats, you know, coming to the area of Bauru Punta Cana. As you know, I, I used to live in Igüey, so I wanted to be closer to Americans and Canadians. And that's beautiful. And just hearing you say eight years is incredible to me because where did the time go? Absolutely. Philly? <laughs> when I first met Philly, I, I have to tell this story real quick. Philly came to my office and Philly was like, I have somebody who wants to sell a property. Here you go. I have somebody who wants to buy a property. Here you go. And he would come to my office and just hand me these people. And after a while, I was like, Philly, why don't you just become an agent? Because I don't have time to deal with all these people. You have so many leads That's and true. so many connections. You might as well be an agent. Mm -hmm. And Philly had just graduated, graduated from with college yeah, yeah. had we just did law school exactly mm -hmm. so he's actually a lawyer mm -hmm. he graduated with a law degree that's correct from Igwe. he came to my office and i thought okay well you're gonna be a big time lawyer but in the meantime maybe sell a little bit of real estate right. learn about this business and fortunate for me, the rest is history because Philly is still selling real estate, yes. top sales agent. You've done so much with your career, which we'll get into a little mm -hmm. bit later, but you've invested, you've bought properties, you're a yes. property owner, you've done a lot of things, which for me is really beautiful because one of my passions in real estate is that the people I work with can become investors, can invest in real estate, can realize their dreams. So it's not only about selling real estate, but really about investing and having other ways to earn income to really be free in the in the future. That's so correct. Yeah, we, we really appreciate you showing us the rope, you know, to become a real estate owner. That is a process, of course, We've lived it. I would say God's time is perfect because once after we, we founded Keller Williams, which was back in 2020, the right opportunities came. You yes. know? And I think a lot has to do with what you have guided us to save. You know, it's not what you make, it's what you save. That's, yes. that's the key in life. So those opportunities came within months, right? Like we got to, you know, not only one, but two properties, you know, that, that was great. I so love that because... You know, as a realtor, you're selling properties, you're helping people to accomplish their dreams, yes. which is one of my goals, is helping people to accomplish their dreams. But there's also the piece about, as a realtor, also being an investor because we have the opportunities yes. that come to us too. There's an age there's always saying, opportunities. of course, mm -hmm. the saying that you can get rich selling real estate, but in order to get wealthy, yes. you have to you have to make investments. You have to invest. Yes. So that is something that's really, really beautiful. But I imagine that there may be people out there who may be not to the stage of buying at this point, but maybe wanting to change their career and even yes. look into being an agent per Absolutely. se. 
So what There's can always you say opportunities. About um, I would say here in Punta Cana with our company, which is Keller Williams, we do give the right tools, the right training for them to become uh, a real estate agent. And, you know, in my case, I'm always in the office every day. So, you know, uh, let's say an agent like Presley Vasquez, right, that we took under our wing. Um, a rock star. He's a, a rock star. A capper right now. So there is a lot of opportunities, guys. Everybody that's out there that wants to come to Dominican Republic, especially to Punta Cana, um, there is opportunity for you to become part of our team. I love that. And we're always growing. We're training. Mm -hmm. We're collaborating. And what I really love about Keller Williams is a part of our values, faith, family, then yes. business, which we really, really believe in. We have our faith. Uh, everybody has their faith, but that right. is the most important. And then family, of course, yes. we have our families. The so values. Have, yeah, the values. Yeah, yeah. And, and also the culture, you know, of course, sharing and giving. Us in, in Keller Williams, right, we have our Red Day, which is something that we do every May of every year. And we give back to the community, right? We we love the fact of what Keller Williams it, it represents. Yes. And that is something that is, I would say, unique. There's no other real estate company in the world that offers what Keller Williams gives. I agree with that. And our Red Day is something that is special because mm -hmm. that is a day when every Keller Williams office in the world is closed for business. And what we do is we go out and we do a community service in our local community. Right. So we have done various things. We've oh, been yeah. to the orphanage. Orphanage. We did the school last year. Yes. We'll probably go again this year again because the kids are the future, yes. right? The future of our nation. And it, for me, I remember when we went to the orphanage, I think it was a year or two ago. And for some reason, we I don't know. We played soccer there, remember? You remember that? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was a kids. soccer player in college. Right, and right. so for some reason, I erased those 30 years in between the last time I played soccer. Yeah. And that day, and I was running out there like I thought I was like 20 years old. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I was a goalie. I just... <laughs> What's How many times did I now? wipe out, man? I just, I just recently fixed that with my yeah, personal. Yeah, it took trainer. so many years with those, <laughs> that injury you had. Oh there. my gosh! Yeah. But I had fun, and the kids were really inspiring, and they were really excited to see us. They, they remember us by name, mm -hmm. and it was just really a fulfilling experience for us to be a part of the community. Right, right. Going to the orphanage going to the school, yes. uh, what we've done with the church, yeah. what we've done when there Also the been... remodelation, you know, with exactly. that school. We did all that painting. And, of course, that day, you know, the kids, they had their book bags. And, and of course, like, they had pizza there. It was something that totally, whenever you have that opportunity to give back, that is amazing. Yes. And it's so nice because... We always say, we're going to do it. We need to do it. We're going to yeah. do it. We should do it. And sometimes there's not time. And it's really beautiful because yes. Red Day yes. is a day that it doesn't Every, matter what yeah. you have. The office is closed. closed. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's an international day that has the office has to be totally closed to give back to the community. Yes. And that is a wonderful thing. I really Absolutely. love that Red Day. And speaking of culture and Red Day, Philly, I have to acknowledge that you are the cultural ambassador for the entire country, the Dominican Republic. Yeah, well, it was it's a great honor, privilege to be selected, you know, out of 300 something agents in the country to be that culture ambassador. I think a lot has to do with what we do on the field and off the field. We do appreciate taking care of people. That's what it's all about. And Keller Williams, with us, we're all a family. So being, let's say, the veteran or founder of Keller Williams, uh, Dominican Republic, a lot of people, we, we take care of them. You know, and that's what all, our culture is all about. So going with you to um, Austin, Texas, and getting that, you know, that distinction with um, Gary Keller and Mo Anderson, that was something priceless. That's something very unique. And, and I tell you something, Philly, I was so proud. Yeah. I, I cannot even tell you how proud I was. If it was me, I would not have been as proud as I was seeing yeah. you walk across that stage representing all of the Dominican Republic as yes. the cultural ambassador for Keller Williams. So I just love that it's very much a culture of giving, of sharing, yes. of helping people, which was actually 
my vision when I moved to the Dominican That's Republic, right. it was like, listen, I don't speak Spanish, but I can learn. Yes, I want to yes. help people. It's to- all about taking care of the people. Yes. Kind of day. And that's what real estate is all about. We yes. definitely were always excited to, let's say, uh, be with people from all over the world. Yes. And, um, you know, we, we think that in life is not subtracting, it's adding. Exactly. And that's what we're all about, right? So uh, we, we don't have no days off. You know, we're always there to, to help our people out. Imagine waking up in paradise. Forget about those ordinary all-inclusive resorts. Welcome to Boutique Hotel Las Flores, a secluded oasis in the heart of Punta Cana. Come, let's take a look. Dominican Republic, where would you say, speaking about people from all over the world, right? where are the buyers coming from coming in this from, market? Let's say before the COVID era, we had a lot of, let's say, Canadians, right? Mm-hmm. Th- those were the number ones. But after COVID, we, we noticed that United States, you know, they've taken over. Mm-hmm. You know, mostly it's Canadians and Americans. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have people from other countries at we all? We do, actually. You know, the other day we had a, a call from some clients staying at Lopez San Resort, and uh, they're England, but they, they're Hindus. So, you know, imagine having people from England, Hindus, you know, that's something very surprising. But, yeah, we've had um, people from Europe, you know, we've had people from Asia, uh, people from Thailand, Australia, like all over the world. You know, mm-hmm. definitely that's the exciting thing about Punta Cana, that Punta Cana, you know, brings any, everybody from the world yes. to here. Yes. And, and that's why there's a lot of opportunities. I completely agree with you. And this is one thing that I see and I feel and, and I have seen and felt right. over all the years that I've been here is that things are going on in the world. Yes. There, there's drama and going on. And that's not going to stop. That's not going to stop. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The thing is, you know, people come to Punta Cana because they don't want to hear that, right? Right. Like, let's say if you go like us, for example, we just did the family reunion in Las Vegas. By the way, the family reunion is our yearly convention of Keller yes. Williams. And it's funny because I was with Aristides, you know, in the airport, and we're just having simple breakfast, and all of a sudden CNN with this news, right, like the war, war and everything. But uh, people are tired of that. You know, people yes. come to Punta Cana because they want to be by the beach. They want to just relax and, and not hear none of that. And I don't know, but I don't really see, I don't really hear that at all, unless yes. some, a client tells me what's going on in the world. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. So listen, if you are tired of hearing all of the drama that is going on in the news, come to Punta Cana because you don't have those TV screens yes. that are showing you war fire and terrible things going on throughout the world. It's actually very nice that you can come here and what is in front of you, the sunshine, yes. the palm trees, the beach, the nice, weather. happy people. Yeah. And it's just a different type of environment. Absolutely. It's really, really nice. Yeah. You know, going back to the market, you know, with the real estate, there is opportunities here because let's say you go to America, right? There, you can't buy nothing for a hundred thousand. No. So that's why people come here because there is, you know, properties within five, 10 minute walk to the beach or a hundred K. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's really great. Exactly. And these are properties where you can earn income. You can rent them. Airbnb yes. or booking.com or whatever, what have you. There are ways to make money and own property yes. for less than 100000 There you go. It's very simple, right? You just need basically a passport or a driver license. And let's say within two to $5,000 to reserve. Here we have the scenarios where you can either buy pre-construction or turnkey property. With turnkey property, there is existing bank financing, so you could get up to 70% coverage from the bank. That means you would have to only come up with 30%. But yeah, you know, it's very fascinating that you have these opportunities. Either you go with something existing or, you know, something to be built out throughout construction, which gives you more time 
for it to be built to pay it out. Is there one that's better than the other? Let's say somebody's out there like, which one should I do? How would you advise somebody? Yeah. Well, the good thing with pre-construction is that you make equity along the way. So definitely, if you're not in a rush, you would want to go with this option because you will gain that equity. With existing properties, it's always good to work with a trusted realtor because they will advise you and, and guide you to get the right price. As long as you're getting at the right price, then it's a deal. If not, it's not a deal. Yeah. And I love that. Let me tell you something about Philly. He is a master negotiator. I mean, I didn't know that when I met him, but Philly comes to me. He's like, so can we do it like this? Can we do it like that? How about this? And and you're really, really good about putting the deal together. And your buyers are always, always happy because you really do the best for everybody. You make sure that we get to the finish line. Well, it's all about, you know, taking care of business at the end and you know, what we always try to say to people is making it happen. Yeah. So people, you know, they, they love that and they're always referring business because of that. Yeah. Yeah. I know you stay pretty busy. I mean, you not only get leads from me, you get leads from your colleagues, you get leads from agents from yes. the United States, from you all get over. leads from your previous clients. Yes. I mean, how do you handle all of it? Really? But you just got to make time for everybody. We love what we do and that shows in our day by day. I think so. And I like your comment about the equity because now that I've been building yeah. and we're building these properties, we actually design the equity into the project. That's for correct. example, just to give a little bit of background on how that works in gaining equity with pre-construction, what we do is we design the project so that the first sales, the really early investors get the best opportunities. Maybe they're getting the property for a lower price, but they're taking a little That's bit more correct. risk yeah. because they're investing in the project early. But as we hit milestones with sales, we increase the value of the properties or we increase the price little by little so that by the end, there could be significant yeah. equity well, already built in. Let's look at this way. For example, here in Maple Beach, we had clients that bought for 95000 Yes. Now their properties are like one sixty. Exactly. So, you know, there is, like you said, the advantage is to get in early. But still, even if you get in with builders, you know, there's always that equity because the builder's price is always going to be less than what the resale price is. Yes. So you always want to take advantage, you know, buying directly from the builder. Yes. Unless... You have all of your money at once, yes. which some people are say, I don't want to have my money sitting there and right. I'm not earning off of it for the next couple of years. And then we have resales yes. that they can buy where they can buy it, yeah. take possession, get title right away, put furniture if they need to and start earning Absolutely. income immediately. That's another option. You have dreamed of the perfect Caribbean beach lifestyle. With Boardwalk Developments, we have the blueprint for you in this tropical paradise. Celebrate incredible returns when you elevate your investment portfolio with the hottest real estate in Punta Cana. Invest wisely, live lavishly. We'll show you how. Contact Boardwalk Developments, Punta Cana. Over the years, the area has really grown. It used to be when I first got here a whole lot of years ago. Dirt road. Just dirt road and right, beach. Right. <laughs> I tell that story, yeah, right? Yeah, that was yeah. nothing. Just the beach. That's true. And we would go to the beach all the time and everything I sold was beach, 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 beach. Yes. But now... We're not just beach. We have other areas, uh, other yeah. communities that are very interesting that people are living in. Can you talk about some of the other yeah. neighborhoods well, around the town? Cortecito, where we are, right? It's basically the only like beach town area of Bauru Punta Cana. I mean, I tell all the time the clients that there is not another Cortecito, okay? Having the restaurants, the bars, the beach within walking distance makes it that place where everybody wants to be when it comes to rental properties itself. There's other communities like Cap Cana, Punta Cana Village, you know, over by the Punta Cana area. Those areas are gated, filled with golf courses, with just having everything also closed, the banks, the pharmacies, the, the hospitals. And, you know, we've seen throughout these years, like an increase with, with properties there. For example, I was uh, mentioning the other day to someone that 
Punta Cana Village, the homes around COVID time were like four or 500,000. Now we're seeing that they're like seven, 800, even up to a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. A million dollars in Punta Cana Village. Yeah. So those properties have really appreciated. Totally, totally. And Cap Cana as well, you know, it's there you have a lot of uh, investments, you know, like the San Regis, you know, the Hyatts and Punta Espada Golf Course, which used to be before PGA. There is also the people there that, that love that area. But Cocotar, for example, that's close to El Cortecito, um, we've seen that there's no longer condos in the 150s. Before, that was the, the scenarios, but now it's like basically 200 and over. The access of having the resort of Melilla makes it that feature that everybody wants to have. Right, so owners in Cocotal have access to the beach over yes. at Melia. Correct. Nice. And, you know, we enjoy of that. We, we own the properties there. We live there, so we know what it's all about. Yeah, so, yeah. it's nice. It's, it I is. love living in Cocotal. And when I first moved there, so Cocotal is a golf course in the area. It's 27 holes, and it was first built in 2003, so it's over 20 years yeah, old. Yeah, 21 and, years now, yeah. 22 years, basically. I, I remember when we came from New York, uh, my parents actually, they bought land there, and they still have it up today. And it was basically just empty land. There was the clubhouse, and... We took the golf cart and we just basically, from that clubhouse, we drove in the golf cart to point where it was going to be our land. Wow. So that was 21 years ago. So are you thinking, what are you thinking about doing with that land, Philly? Uh, eventually we may do a house. Now, in my case, I own several condos there. So they're still young, but eventually they're going to probably retire and, and build a home there. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. But I know that your dad has land in the mountains of Anamuya. Oh, yeah. That's and, true. and my husband, Andres, is dying to get a piece of land right yeah. next to his to be in the mountains where there is tranquilidad. Yes, Like yes. the peacefulness out there in the mountains, literally like 30 minutes from Punta Cana, which is yes. beautiful because you have the beaches here, you have the mountains here. I'm recently learning there are waterfalls in any way that I have to make friends and find a way to get there. But so much beauty here in Punta Cana in this area. For yeah, it's very close, like you mentioned, a basically 30, 40 minute drive. Not too long ago, I actually visited our friend Aristides. You know, mm -hmm. he, he has a home nearby and I learned that new route right from here to Anamuya. So mm -hmm. we know that it's super close and that's something very, you know, unique. So where do you see the opportunities going if people ask you as a real estate professional, an expert in this area, are all the good deals done? Is everything no. bought? Like, is it, a, should I buy or not? Is it too late? What would you say? There's still opportunities, you know, as, as of course, if you have the patient, you know, to get into it and, and just let that blossom. Definitely, there is always opportunities. For example, even here, like when we call this Maple Suites, right? They're like 150000 I mean, two minute walk to the beach and you, you could get into something with that price. So to put you with that as an example, there is always going to be opportunities. Just go with an experienced realtor and he'll take care of you. Yes, I think that is a very good tip. Mark the date because there will be a day when Maple Suites will not be found for under 200000 And those who got in right, now right. are going to be really happy about the equity that they have in their investment. So tell us, Philly, a little bit about the process to buy. You mentioned between 2000 and 5000 for a deposit. Yes. And then what? Well, then you have to put normally a 10 to 20% completion down payment, and you would have to sign what we call a promise of sale contract. Eventually, then you do th payments throughout the construction. This would be every two or three months uh, to complete a 30, 40%, and then a final 40%, 40, 50% at the end. Yes, yes. So... If you're buying in pre-construction, you're working with the lawyer, the lawyer yes. is making the contract, you're yeah, making make your Yeah, make sure you, you get a reputable lawyer that, you know, does his due diligence, that makes sure that, you know, all the documentation is in order and that the project is, is good to go. Adding to the payment plan, basically that final 50%, you can go to your bank and get a financing. And that would be a local bank. So... Local banks can finance that final payment yes, of the project. That's okay. correct. So what we do with our clients is that, you know, once they know what they want and they're putting this reservation deposit, we go ahead and get them already settled in with the bank. So mm -hmm. they get pre-approved and that way at the end, there's no surprises. Okay. There are no surprises because... Yes. 
they have to qualify with the bank, right? They have to send an application and bank statements uh, and income credit tax rep- mm-hmm. and uh, you know their social security, basically the work letter, just prove that they could be qualified for that loan that they're going to be getting at the end, which always 10 out of 10 that is delivered because those money that they're getting as a loan is based on the pre-construction price. Mm -hmm. So when the bank at the end appraises the property, it's already another value. So it's a win-win all day. So if you have buyers who are credit worthy, yes. they should have as no problem. As long as they're qualified at the beginning and they keep themselves with that credit behavior, then they'll get that loan. And we work with like the bank, La Fise, Promerica Bank. Those are our partners now that they're taking care of our clients. So very important to know, you can be pre-qualified with the bank, but you have to maintain your credit worthiness. So if you are pre-qualified one day, don't go out and blow your credit the next day. <laughs> That's right. Because they will pull your information again at the end. You can be pre-qualified, but at the end, if it's more than three months, more or less, then they will pull all of your information again. So you don't want to get stuck. You do want to absolutely maintain your credit rating if you want to finance the closing of your property if you're buying in pre-construction. But if you're buying some something that is existing right away, then you're closing the deal right away. That's correct. Um, You know, normally what we do with our clients is we place in the uh, purchase offers that the money will be refundable, the the reservation deposit, if they do not obtain the bank loan. And we give the side of the seller the window for him to get a a cash deal in this meantime. Mm -hmm. That means that there's no risk and Basically, if you do obtain that bank loan, you get your property. And you are good, Philly. I mean, let me just tell you something. People who are working with Felipe, they get to the end of the rainbow. And I love that about you because you are like diehard. It's like, listen, we're going to get this done C or C. Right. And I really love that about you. It's a pleasure always. And it's all about just coming through and taking care of the people. Yes. We love the fact that we get into these opportunities and we will go to the end with the clients and beyond (laughs) yeah for sure there's always the electricity also the bank accounts and also internet service anything they need to get accommodated to our country here in the dominican republic and actually that's one of the things that i really love doing being a broker and an owner here because we are a gateway for many people and their first introduction to Punta Cana. And it's really interesting because we have our ladies who answer the phones that we tell people that they have a forever guarantee. That's true. You have a forever guarantee with us until you are comfortable and on your feet and able to get around and do what you need to do. You can always count on us. That's true. You just basically just give us a call and we're always there yes no matter what and um you know we will always find time for you guys exactly i mean we've had people to even call us to say help me order pizza yeah i know (laughs) call the mini market for delivery We will do whatever you need, but there is a really nice expat community that we link people with that has grown throughout the years. uh, We did Uh, that move 21 years ago. Our clients who have become our friends, who have created a community here here where you can really plug in and feel very comfortable. And speaking of expats, I mean, Philly, we haven't talked yet about your background, where you're from. This is a podcast that attracts to people living outside of Punta Cana who are interested in Punta Cana. And right. you actually moved to Punta Cana. Yes. Uh, those I moved years in ago. Uh, 2003, you know, summer of 03. And the main reason why we moved was because of 9 11. Wow. You know, we born and raised in New York. We had a family business in the Queens area. And, you know, that occurred and, and that changed our lives. Our parents they wanted to to move back home and they were like we're tired of the stress you know we're tired of what's going on here in the states and we just wanted So you are Dominican. Yes. You are Dominican American, American Dominican, but your both of your parents are Dominican. Yes, yes. They're okay. from Igwe, so an hour away from here from Punta Cana. It's home here. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you really have the best of both worlds, the best of all worlds. Yes. And, you know, whenever we want to go, we just hop on a plane and we're yeah, there. We that's do. That's a good thing. Yeah. We, do. we go on vacations together. I, Philly, Philly travels with Yeah, me. that's true. It's really wonderful mm -hmm. uh, being with you and having you a part of the team. Likewise. I want to tell a quick another little story, anecdote about Philly. Philly lives, his family lives in Igwe. And it's about an hour away. So when he first started, like, finally I recruited him. I was like, Philly, you're sending me all these clients. Why don't you just deal with the clients and we'll teach you how to do it? And so you were working in Igwe and was always saying, if you need me, call me. Anything no, you need, call me. Work. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, Philly, if I call you, I need you, like, right now because somebody is in the office. They're That's not going to wait an, an hour. hour away, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now... You have your condos, your homes, you live here, yeah. you're in the office every day, business is going mm -hmm. good. And, and Yeah, we're established here, you know, we don't want to leave basically here. It has kind of like a U.S. feeling. I was telling a client the other day that he asked me, what's, how, what's going on in Sosua? What's going on in La Samana? All these places are nice, but nothing compared to Punta Cana. Having the security, the airport, just the infrastructure makes it more like I feel like I'm back in the U.S. <laughs> If you want to get rich in real estate, download my PDF. In working in real estate and selling properties to people, mostly expats and people from other countries, what would you say to folks out there who are interested in buying property that could be helpful to them? Well, always do your due diligence, right? Look mm -hmm. for a good lawyer, work with a reputable real estate agency, and go with the process. I understand that maybe the process is a little bit different back home, but trust that the experts here, the local experts, they'll get the job done. And with us, I could say that we've been doing this for eight years. I mean, it's been amazing. I know you've been almost 20 years, and it's all about our reputation and getting things done. And would you say that folks need to learn English, for example, or let's say learn Spanish? Because most of our buyers only speak English. So is Spanish important to learn to move here or to buy property here in Punta Cana? If you're going to be mostly in the area of Bauro Punta Cana, you could kind of live away without knowing Spanish, but... If you could like definitely learn it, that would be a plus because, of course, there is everybody on the streets that speak the language of Spanish. But if you go to the restaurants, you go to banks, you go to service, somewhere or another, there is people that speak English. Mm -hmm. And what would you say would be the best way to learn Spanish? Do you have any tips about that? Um, How to learn Spanish? Duolingo. Duolingo? Yeah. Are they good? <laughs> I, I believe so. And it's free. You know, I, look, I know people like that. Uh, but uh, also Rosetta Stone. Mm -hmm. I've seen people that they also have, had, have higher private tutors here. Yeah, I know there are people in the local area who are giving mm -hmm. uh, lessons. They're actually teaching Spanish. They're teaching English. They're yes. teaching a little bit of everything. So We have a, an expat veteran, uh, Troy, Troy Ashley, mm -hmm. that he has a, a private tutor that, you know, teaches him Spanish. Okay. So there is that uh, option as well. Well, that's beautiful. So you can learn. Actually, when I moved here, I could not speak Spanish. So I learned along the way. It's not a requirement. It's not necessary. But it helps if you can start learning Spanish words little by little, step by step, and you will get there. So thank you for that advice and, and those tips. So as a part of the podcast, we take some questions from the community. So I'm going to go ahead ahead and see what questions we have for you. Philly, I've heard investing in pre-construction is not safe. How can I be sure I'm investing with the right developer? Ooh, that's a very good question. It sure is. I always tell the clients that it goes basically to a bottom line. You always want to work with a developer that already has delivered, right? Mm -hmm. That has experience and that, you know, that is, it has already a reputation. Yes. So, Always try to just, you know, go with some developer that already has come through with projects. If you, you know, of course, research with an attorney, he will guide you and, and, and of course, get you to where you want to get to. Yeah, that's very, very true. And 
these days there are a lot of fly by night people who are buying a oh, piece yeah. of land and saying, Hey, I'm building a project. So yes. that's something to definitely be careful of. Uh, first and foremost, work with a reputable agent, a reputable company, Yes. get a reputable lawyer. They can recommend you a reputable developer. So work with reputable people. Don't just take somebody's idea or find whatever on the internet. Anybody can put anything on the internet. And I think that's very good advice to make sure that the professionals that you work with, number one, are professional and are reputable. And in that case, you are least likely to have a, a negative experience. That's really. correct. Always yeah. just go with that. Okay. Very, very good. So Philly, let me take another question. Can I take another one? Yeah, for sure. You've done so great today. I want to make sure that we get one more question in is real estate purchased in dollars or pesos now that's a good question uh dollars always u.s pesos? dollars if you're like buying this property for rental purpose you are obtaining u.s dollars all the time people ask me oh if it's dominican pesos it's you know that's the local currency that's not the case you know everything in the touristic zone of Bauru punta cana runs by U.S. dollars. Yes. And that's very good because the U.S. dollar is an international currency. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty stable currency compared to others. And most people know how to adjust their home currency with the U.S. dollar. Yes. So. There's always protection with U.S. dollars. You mm -hmm. know, when you are obtaining pesos, you know, if the dollar is going down, you know, then you lose money. But when it comes to renting and buying, um, it is U.S. dollars. Yes. And so the rental income is in U.S. dollars as yes. well. So those who are earning in other currencies, it could be nice to be able to have income in U.S. dollars. And then yeah. also, of course, if you decide to resell in the future, yes. U.S. dollars. And it's always good, like, let's say if you're going to a restaurant, you know, let's say putting gas, you always want to change U.S. dollars to pesos. They receive the U.S. dollars, the, the commercials in the area, but they will probably receive it less than what it goes at the current value uh, on, the, on that day. So let's say if the dollar right now, it's at 58, 59. When these commercials, they'll probably receive it at 55. Okay. So you will always lose money if you're paying with dollars. Okay. You want to make sure you just go ex and exchange and use those pesos for services. Okay, so then it's a good idea to exchange pesos to use them in yes. the local area. Yeah, if you want to, let's say, pay your electricity bill, you know, or your telephone provider, you know, you want to take care of that in pesos. When it comes to HOA fees, you know, that is uh, paid in U.S. dollars. If you do pay in pesos, you will have to pay more money to get that done. So it's good to work in both dollars and pesos, yes, depending, on, depending the on the scenario. That's okay, correct. that's very good to know, Philly. Yeah. And thank you so much for all it is of a these pleasure always. perfect tips. Is there anything else that you may want to offer to our viewers out there from your experience, just right. to give them other tips? If they're making the move or they deciding that they want to just chat and, and see what can we offer here, we're always available. So they just got to reach out to us in our website or on our phone. We have WhatsApp. We're, we're easy to reach out. How do people reach you if they want to contact you and ask you some questions? Um, well, we have LinkedIn. We have social media. And also we have our website with Keller Williams. So KW Punta Cana, you know, you search me and just click and, and I will be gladly there to answer all your questions. Perfect. Well, Philly, thank you so much for being it is our pleasure. here today. You. you know, I love you from I the bottom of my well. heart and so happy to have you here to have been with you throughout your growth and your career as a realtor. You're number one. You're a beautiful representation of Keller Williams of Punta Cana. And I'm sure that it has shown through with, with the folks here today. You're a total wealth of knowledge and very sincere about what you do. So um, just really appreciative that, that we had this opportunity to share with the folks today. And thank you for being a part of the episode. It is an, an honor and a pleasure. And um, thank you, you know, for being part of this and for helping me throughout all these years. And, you know, it's all the people, you know, without no one, we would not be where we are today. Beautiful. So we thank you guys. That beautiful. So thank you to all of you for watching this episode of the Punta Cana podcast. Please comment, subscribe, like, share, and we'll see you on a future episode of the Punta Cana podcast. Thank you so much.